All right, Shalom. Let's get into this point right here. All right. Okay, it's, it's been reported, though a lot of us knew that something was wrong. And in fact, this is one of the reasons why if you go back a couple of vids, well, not a couple of vids, but maybe um, um, some tens of vids, really. But, it's, but it's, at the, it's at the site, it's on the channel, and it's concerning um, circumcision. Circumcision. Now, if you if if you recall, we had touched on the issue about circumcision. That there's two types of circumcision. There is what the Bible, speaking of Abraham, what was given to Abraham. But this 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 um practice really is an ancient practice. Circumcision. Male circumcision. Let's specify that as well. Male circumcision. Now, the New Testament speaks about circumcision too, but the circumcision of our heart. But if we don't understand the one, it's really hard and even impossible to understand the other. Because even some of the Jews or the ethnic Hebrews also misunderstood a lot. This is why they rejected as a group. And we're speaking about really the black Hebrews Firstly, foremostly, because that's what the New Testament Bible is really speaking about, ethnically. Now, of course, a lot of folks want to say don't talk about races, or so, but that's important to understand the truth. When, when Yeshua came, he didn't come as an invisible person. He didn't come as a, as, as a spook in the sense of an invisible person, but as a spook in the other European racialistic sense as a black man. Now, we already understand that we're not going to go over that, that particular ground again right now because the evidence is really out there. It's overwhelming, you know, the amount of evidence. And the only reason why it's not more generally accepted is because we still are living in the devil or Satan's world. We're living in his world system, you understand, and we're living under so-called white supremacy, what's known as the, the times of the Gentiles, biblically speaking now. On circumcision, they say death by circumcision. If you go on the YouTubes or, I don't know if it's on YouTube yet, but it's out there on the Internet. If you go on the Internet, Google it. That's how you all say it, right? Google it. If you Google um, death by circumcision and the whole thing about circumcision, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, information out there recently. But what's very interesting is this. And when we point out circumcision, first of all, there's two types of circumcision. There is the ancient Ethiopic and the ancient Egyptian or Afro-Shemitic hygienic custom. And this is what Abraham, this is what Father Abraham, also a black Assyrian, in other words, an Ethiopian Assyrian, a black man, Abraham of your Bible, Father Abraham. This is what Yahweh had given him. Because he's coming now out of, out of um, the West, what they call um, the Eastern Eastern, the Eastern Shemitic part. I don't want to even get into some of that right now at this particular um, moment, some of that more nuanced studies. Some of you already understand why it's significant. But to just explain this particular story, cause we're going to upload a couple of vids, their vid as well as the next vid we caught off of TV about off of the news this morning. I only caught the last part of it. Basically, what they say is that death by circumcision. They said there's this whole reconsidering of circumcision. But then if you Google circumcision in Africa, you will find that studies have shown and proven that circumcision lowers the risk and the, um, 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 what do they call it, the risk and the catching, you know, of AIDS and the transmission of sexually transmitted diseases in Africa, so it really lowers its whole age risk. So in that sense, there's a positive to circumcision. Now, what's interesting is this, is that circumcision, male circumcision, let's once again emphasize that female so-called circumcision is nothing other than female genital mutilation. And we don't care, I and I not care, if one say it goes on in Africa, if it goes on even in Ethiopia, you understand? That is not a Al-Kidanawi or a covenant, you understand, practice. 
that is outside of the will of God in Christ and has absolutely no hygienic or any other reason or purpose, but it's a, a diabolical, devil, evil, vain tradition. But there's something interesting about the fact that male circumcision, original male circumcision, and, and let me use this right here as an example. The, 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 the glands, right, the glands that cover the head of the, of, of the penis. If you move it back, there's a cord. There's a cord. When that cord is just split, you understand? The glands, I mean, the, the skin, right, it rolls back, right? And we're talking about in an eight-month, uh, eight uh, eight, excuse me, day, uh, eight-day um, um, male child. Notice, it's just, a, it's just the, the cord is cut. But modern circumcision, remember I said there was two types of circumcision. Modern circumcision where the whole world, you remember the, the Bible tells us that that the dragon, the devil, the deceiver has lied to and deceived the whole world. So most people in the world, you understand, know believe that the circumcision that is done in the hospital and by the so-called converted Khazar, the Khazarian or European Jews, is the proper form, and that's what circumcision is all about. You know what I'm Because they believe that the Jews who call themselves Jews are really the Jews or the Judeans according to the scripture. So when we speak about Kedemawi Haile Salasi, when we speak about the true lion of the tribe of Judah, you understand, and we speak about the true Jews or the Ethiopian Hebrews, a lot of folks laugh it off, you know, but really the joke is on them, you understand, because they have been deceived, and, and get this, most of them don't even know it, you understand, they're going to, they're going to, get to learn it or find out, but unfortunately for many of them, it's, it'll, it'll be too late, you understand, because they have heard, you understand, they listen to the message, but they have not really heard it, you understand, they have not become obedient, you understand, to the Wengel, to the good news of our black Lord and sa Savior, Yeshua ha Moshia. But now, on this case about the circumcision thing, right, there's a lot of this story, and you might wonder, well, if the Jews control the media, Right? If the Jews control the media, why is there so many of these things creeping out that seems to um, point out some Jewish things? And you, have to, you really have to get this particular point. Remember when we said about the circumcision? There's two forms of circumcision. There's the, the, the popular but wrong worldly kind where the, where the skin is pulled above the glands. Say this is the penis head. The skin is pulled above the glands and it's snipped off. That skin is cut off. You understand? So you can imagine what goes on there. That is totally an abomination. That is not what Yahweh, not what John commanded, because that is not what the civilizers or the civilized Afro Shemites, speaking of the ancient. Tobians or Ethiopians and the ancient Egyptians, it's not what they practice. What they practice is the same thing that was communicated to Father Abraham, where the skin is rolled back on that eight-day-old male child, and that cord on the bottom side is just gone around and, and, and it's cut. The cord is cut, and the skin rolls back, and what's an eight-day-old baby? By the time it grows up, you know how the skin and the body is, is an amazing, wonderful thing. Because then when the body, um, as, as a child grows, that skin is taken up by the body. In other words, it, 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 it doesn't fall down, become flappy, whatever like that. Now, when folks get circumcised later on in life, well, that's a little bit different. This is why it was commanded, right, to Abraham. So the Abrahamic biblical tradition, in a sense, is a reintroduction, right, into that particular part of the family, Abraham family, and some of those Shemites to an ancient practice, hygienic practice. You see, because the whole promise to Father Abraham was that you will be a father of a multitude. But in order to assure that, a, 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 a hygiene, a cleansiness, had to be incorporated. You know, so now people will say, well, how, how was it 
that, um, you know, how was it that this foreskin is there? If, if God created the foreskin and, and you're saying circumcise it, we're not saying cut it off. We're not saying cut it off, but that is the latter day practice. So there is something right about John's circumcision, the true way, the ancient way that, that Ethiopians and ancient Egyptians, Afro-Shemites practice it, but something awfully wrong about this modern-day practice, both by cutting it off and now the Hazar, the Hazarian and Hasidic Jews, they now add to it where the uh, Rebbe or Mohel, they call it the Mohel, right, um, basically sucks out the blood. And it was basically sucks the baby's penis in a sense, but sucks that blood out. Anyway, that, that's totally unbiblical. That is not a Hebraic, that's not kosher, or as they would say, kosher. But they say so, you understand, because the Bible has told us something, says that there'll be another set of people, right? Remember what John says about us? He says that we will be like branches of a tree broken off. So we've been broken off from our culture. And that these are like wild olive trees, and they will be grafted in, to our roots. You find this in, in Romans, Hawadi Apollos, he, he speaks about that. You can study the history of the Khazars and vis-a-vis -vis, um, contrary and vis-a-vis -vis the Ethiopian Hebrews, Beta Israel, other Afro um, Shemitic communities of Beta Israel. You can go back to the catacombs, you can go back to ancient history, you can check out um, what's his name, um, the, 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 the famous uh, historian, um, I forget his name right now at this particular, at this particular um, time, but he was around the time of, of, of the temple, of when the temple was, was brought down, the Solomon's temple in the time of um, Vespasian and, and Titus, and he also said that the Ethiopians or the Jews that he encountered and the Jews were of the race, get this, of the race of the Ethiopians. So this whole connection to Africa and in particular to Ethiopia, both from historical evidence as well as from inner biblical evidence. I mean, who was Moses' wife? I mean, think about that. How many times did Josh said, I'll destroy these disobedient people and make a great nation out of you, Moses? That means we would have had an Ethiopian Hebrew nation from such and such a time. But it was only up until the time of Solomon and Sheba, you understand, where this tradition basically um, now becomes one. In other words, the Ethiopian, the Hebraic part, and then we have the kingdom of David being renewed in the highlands of Ethiopia. Now, on the point about circumcision, because I think it's just really important to, to kind of um, go over this, this particular matter in some detail. Now, why is this information coming out now? It seems like a lot of this kind of information is, 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 is circulating all over the place. Why is that happening now? You understand? Because there are two kinds of Jews. We're not just talking about the black and the white. It goes a little bit deeper than that, fellas, brothers, right, brethren. It goes much deeper than just the black and the white. It really comes down to the true and the false, in spirit and in truth. You understand? The true and the false. Yes, there are European. The European, uh, the European at best, is a convert to Judaism. The next question is, what is the, the quality or the purity, you understand, of your heart and your mind and your practice. You see, that, that's, that's the real qualifier. But we're living in this um, white supremacist, you understand, in this white supremacist world system. We're living under the times of the Gentiles and under the times of um, global, um, global whitewashing, you understand. And because we're living in um, such times, now we have another dimension, and that's the dimension that most folks are just caught up with dealing with, you understand, dealing with that other dimension, namely the white and the black issue, you know, and even 
um, the teaching of his majesty tells us that, yes, that's what the evil doers are doing. You know, we're saying that whole racism, racialism, racial discrimination, so forth and so on. But that is still just a, a lower level of the real big picture. You know, so, so brothers, brethren, and sisterin, we have to get beyond that level as the teaching of his majesty, in other words, instructs us and even on a certain level should compel us. But why is all this news coming out right now? Because the Jews or the European Jews are split. The European Jews are, 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 are split. What does that mean that they're split? That you have your secular Jews, the ones who want to say, I'm a Jew, anything you say against me, and anything I do, whether it's biblical or unbiblical, you cannot come against me because if you come against me, I'm going to scream out anti-Semitism and the ADL and the other um, organizations are going to be right there to back me up. Right? So we have those, those secular, some call it crypto Jews, so forth and so on. And when you see what a lot of them are, are promoting, you understand, what they preach, what they practice, and what they're putting out, it causes them to be at odds with the more religious elements of their community, such as the Hasidim. So what am I saying, brothers and sisters? I'm saying what Yeshua would say, what the Moshiach said. You understand? If Satan, right, be divided against himself, if his house be divided against itself, it cannot stand. We're living in prophetic times and we're witnessing some very prophetic things that have never been seen before by humanity, but we have that opportunity. The only place that we've known about it is prophecy. Prophecy of the scriptures is the only place that said there would be days like these. You understand? As well as other prophets in other traditions, when we talk about the Mayan calendar, so forth and so on. Yes, there's a reference there, but we, we, we have to spell check and clarify by true and accurate, you understand, biblical and scriptural exergesis, you understand, or hermeneutics, in other words, all right? Study those words and understand why those are processes. You understand, scientific processes. It's like to evaluate whether gold is really gold. You understand, how would you evaluate something? Like I ask, how can you tell if a, if a, if, if a, um, if a dollar bill is real unless you've seen a real dollar bill? You know, but then, so the whole world has believed certain things because that's what it has been made to believe because it's a big industry that makes money and, and it's one main primary job is bread and circuses just like in Rome, bread and circuses, and to make believe. You understand? That's why they have all these movies and TV shows and other stuff. Because most of y'all, and this is not personal, but most folks, most people don't read. In other words, they might read only if they have to read something. They'll read it, but they don't read because it's like their imagination they, they have lost their ability to, you know, when you read and you're able to actually see the picture and your mind can work on, on putting the word together with the reality in your mind, you can see that in, 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 in your third eye, as it were. A lot of people can. And part of the trauma-based mind control and the programming getting plugged into the matrix, it prevents that from happening now. Of course, people like say, okay, what, what about the death by circumcision thing? You understand? That's why I, I'm, some folks might have clicked on the video. They might hear I and I opine, so to speak, but they've clicked on the video to hear a little bit more about this whole circumcision matter. Well, we've touched on that in the earlier part of it. Now, the next part of this is really connected with this kind of almost, I, I won't call it a civil war among the Jews, but it's like the secular Jews are at odds with the religious Jews. Because if you know, a lot of the Hasidic Jews are not down with that, quote, Zionism thing. They basically are the ones out there, along with the Palestinians, along with the Arabs, saying that what these people have done, almost that Rockefeller, um, not Rockefeller so much, but on, an, on the American level, but the Rothschilds, you understand, the Rothschilds, the Rothschilds thing, the Bank of London, so forth and so on, the crypto Jews, the ring of, ring of power, empire of the city. I don't know if you've seen that video, but the woman there in that video, she's making the point, 
you know what I'm saying? She's making the point that you have Jews or people who are Hebraic or, or whose way of life is Judaism who truly try to live according to the, the code and according to the covenant, whether they be ethnic Hebrews, like we black sheep of the family, like the Ethiopian Hebrews, you know what I'm saying? Or whether they be converts like the Khazars. Now, true, in the Khazarian thing, a lot of errors have crept in, such as that sucking of the blood and so forth and so on. Now they have 11, 11, um, 11 uh, Jewish, European Jewish um, babies who have somehow, or young, 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 young boys who have contracted um, what they call it um, herpes. You understand? Know because when the Khazarian European Jewish um, molehill or rabbi performing the circumcision, they, in their tra tradition, in their custom, you understand, know believe in sucking the blood out of the out of the, the the child's penis or from the when when the blood comes out, which is, you know, what can we say about that other than that is not kosher, that is not scriptural, that's not biblical, that's not what that's not what Yahweh, what Jah commands. You understand? Know Second point is that now the Germans. Right, the Germans in Germany are also seeking to ban um, circumcision because they say it, it does bodily harm. So there's a big old thing out there about how Germany is seeking to ban it, and now the 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 Jews, some of the religious Jews and the Muslims or the religious Muslims and Jews, they're joining together. So people are saying, "Wow, ain't this something? Look at what unites them." But my people. You know what I'm saying? My once lost but now found beta is Israel. We have to get to our own roots. See, we have our own, I would say just custom and tradition, but there are ancient customs and traditions that show and prove to us that even though circumcision in principle, you know what I'm saying, is a hygienic practice. And, and this, is, this is what the, the African study of circumcision has so clearly, evidently proven. You understand that circumcision, when done in these African nations that are plagued by um, HIV and AIDS and, and other sexually transmitted diseases, they found out that actually circumcision dramatically lowers it. But now, here's, let me get this. A lot of these African nations, before colonialism of the Europeans, was practicing some form of circumcision, male circumcision, prior to the European. Then the European comes in, he brings in his version, which we can call it a counterfeited version of Christianity, you understand, into many of these African nations, and then teaches a Pauline so-called um, gospel, you understand, or their version or perversion of of what our brother Paul is saying and make the people believe, stop circumcising. So you have a lot of uncircumcised African men, even though now we find out that circumcision actually was practiced in ancient Ethiopia and ancient Egypt for millennia before Father Abraham and that it was mainly and chiefly a hygienic, for hygienical purposes. Now, I'm going to touch on the next point. I'm, I, I want to go up from this point, but I wanted just to make a couple of things clear on that, the whole thing of, we, we, I think we might call this what? Um, death by um, Khazarian um, circumcision, because see what they're trying to do now, is to say all circumcision is bad based on that. You have to understand what they call it, how they call it, case law. Case law. And study some of the history of case law. It goes back to like to the 1970s um, or so. Case, I think earlier than that, but it really started to get practiced in the 1970s. In other words, it's like if they can charge somebody with something that generally can be listed as this, like the bullying thing with that guy and, and the whole bullying and his gay room, his homosexual roommate, blah, 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 that allegedly committed suicide because he was taunted and bullied and everything. Why were they so adamant, the homosexual um, revolutionaries, why were they so, and agitators, why were they so 
focus on that. Why? What was the reason for Because if they could get this guy convicted, which in a sense they did, they can now use that. It's like some of y'all might know about this, especially as, as persecuted lost sheep or black people. Um, you know how they, how, how when, when, when a lot of black males especially are young, they try to get their names in the system on any old kind of thing. They could be jaywalking. Hey, 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 ooh, come here for a moment. Let me see your ID. I don't know. So you're so and so on. Write it down. And before you know it, if they get caught on carrying a little bit of marijuana, for example, Right? What happens to them? They take them to, to, to the precinct, to court, or whatever like that, and when they look, they say, oh, when you was young, you did this, and you got caught for fighting, and you got caught for, for riding a bicycle on the sidewalk, and because your record, you know what I mean, because of your record, they try to judge you on that record, so it's a part of this whole case history thing. So what they're doing for a lot of these things you keep hearing about, you'd be like, why do we keep hearing about bullying? I mean, yeah, bullying is bad, it should stop, but why are they pushing these things? Because they can now use that as leverage, you understand, know in something else along their pre-planned and pre-conceived um, way. Now, there's a book here that I wanted to point out right here. Some of y'all might have been hoodwinked and bamboozled to say this book ain't real. The protocols, the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. Now, first of all, this book should not be used or construed in any way to say hate the Jews. You know why I say that? Because I and I, as Rastafari, is of Judah. So, in other words, in mistranslation or translation, you can consider I and I to be Jews as well. So, why would we promote hate against I and I ourselves? However, on the other hand, this particular document right here, the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, need to be understood soberly. You know what I'm saying? In other words, from a black mind, because there's a lot of Europeans out there who, um, I, you know, Europeans have, Gentiles have other issues. And, and, and we've got to make this very, very clear. The, the, the Gentiles' real role in Christianity or Rastafari even is to submit you understand, to submit to Christ's will. You understand, submit to Christ's will. If, if they did, then slavery and a lot of other things, all these wars and killing and pornography and everything else, you know, abuse that, that's going on, you understand, would not happen. But it's very clear, you understand, that they have a very uh, hypocritical form of a, of a religion. But anyway, check out a little bit more on that particular death by death by um, circumcision, all right, death by circumcision. But keep two things in mind. One, there are two forms of circumcision. There's the true, right, which most people don't know, and there's the false. That's what be going on, right? And then the Hazarian and, and, and Jews, um, religious so-called Jews, they add a little spin by having their Hazarian European rabbis and molehills suck the blood, like some, some kind of vampire, some crazy kind of thing, you know, but that's not I and I as Beta Israel. That's not I and I tradition, and I really hope and pray that the Beta Israel, the Falasha so-called of Ethiopia, do not pick up that bad, you know, that bad habit because they should learn from what is going on. Even in New York, 11 boys got herpes, you understand, boys have never even had real so-called sex as, as having reached bar mitzvah 13 yet, and they already got this because some of these rabbis have herpes under their lips, you know, they have herpy mouth. And then you think about it and say, wait, I thought these people were so moral and, and have sex between the sheet or something like that. How come this is going on? I, I can't really explain that to you because, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm another ethnicity of Jew and of Hebrew, the Ethiopian Hebrew type, and from our documents and, and tradition, that is not done. You understand? That is, is that's crazy. I mean, it's wild. I mean, it's strange to even imagine, so forth and so on. But that being that, so we have two types of circumcision, right? Learn the difference. Check out the vid that we posted a, a couple of months ago on our channel. Just put circumcision in the search, and it, it should pop up. And then secondly, 
that um what was it that there's two kinds of and that there are um two kind of European Jews. Right? Now we know that there are basically two kind of of Hebrews or Jew Judeans in truth. There's the true ones and there's the false one. And lastly but not leastly, right, um got another point about circumcision and the obelisk. God, stay tuned for circumcision and the obelisk. You're like, what does circumcision have to do with the obelisk? Y'all yeah, must be bugging out. Circumcision and the obelisk? Okay. Maybe I am, but I'm going to share it with you and, you know, and put it put it to the fire. Make it revealed. Let's see if the Let's see if it's if it's gold, if it's AU, if it's AU worthy. Here we have Revelation chapter two, right? Revelation chapter two, right? Um, verse nine. Revelation chapter two, verse nine. I could have gone to John because in John's gospel as well, Christ speaks to the Jews who 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 were the faithful Jews. It's very interesting how he how he puts this right here to the faithful. Um, Jews, he had he had a special um, he had a special word to them um, to those Jews that had um, faith in him. You understand? He spoke to them about about keeping his word. You understand? As as their true duty and obligation in truth. That means that true um, Judeans and true Jews, in other words, that's true Israel. In God's eye, in Jah's eyes, in the Most High's eyes, um, they keep Christ's word. In other words, they, they, they have the Moshiach. They recognize the Moshiach. And that goes beyond really black and white in its highest, in its highest aspect, Yovas. But anyway, we'll go through, that's in John's gospel. Let's go through Revelation right here. Revelation also by John, so John is this connective right there. And John, Johannes means the grace of Yah, the grace of Yah. And, and grace must be also taught on some very, very soul important lessons on grace that we all have to know and meditate on, especially in days like these. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9 says, I know thy works in tribulation and, and poverty, but thou art rich. So this word is speaking to those who keep Yeshua. That means they know who the Moshiach is. You understand? Some Jews say we want Moshiach now. You understand? But we say that Moshiach is Yeshua. You understand? The Moshiach is Yeshua. And that Moshiach is the Moshiach that you miss, but they said, nah, and there's a whole other set of things that they say about Yeshua. And really, when it comes down to the only reason, it's so interesting when you study um, the fact that the Khazars, the European Jews, was many of them converted years later. Some Edomites had also converted, like Herod, so forth and so on, which is a kind of a related but kind of different story. After those, those Asian Muslims are actually part of those who are under Herod, the Indumean. And then you get the Khazarian link over there. I just want to put that out because there's a lot of ones who've been doing research. I'm surprised they haven't made that connection. Like in all the Islamic kind of paintings, old Islamic paintings, you always notice that it's like the, the Muslims of a certain period of time always look Asian. They don't look like those Arabs over there today, you understand. Um, and you say, well, where do these guys go? But then you have to recognize that Asian, Indumean, Edomite kind of connection. It's similar to the fact that um, we have what they call a Chigro. You ever heard of a Chigro before? A Chigro is a Chinese Negro or an Asian, you know, Asian black. You know that combination. Niggas love to say, hey, you look a little Asian. You look like you got Asian eyes. You, you know what I mean? But there's already that within us. So the real Jacob Esau kind of divide. You understand, before white supremacy, before that European leprous strand came out, was divided along those particular lines. But like I said, that's another related point. It says, I know thy works in tribulation. Now here Yeshua is speaking to the message to Smyrna, the period of the great persecution, roughly 316 A.D. And this is roughly the period of time that uh, Caduce Georgis or St. George, 
was martyred for his faith. So when we recognize that Caduceus Georgis is the patron saint of, of Ethiopia, as well as the former black um, nobility and the present um, British monarchy, we can see that kind of connection. Because some of the people went north to Europe, you understand? Some of the black Jews, Hebrews went north. Others went south to Ethiopia, some even beyond to further South Africa, parts of South Africa, and some later on went west. And then you probably already know the rest or should know. But it says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. See, now they, see, what they're trying to do is get enough momentum so that if someone says this, they're going to be like, oh, you can't say that, even if it's from the Bible, so forth and so on. So they're trying to wear down that wall. You know what I'm saying? Wear down that particular wall, you know, the whole church and state thing, right? But here's what it says to us, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful to death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Now, the crown of life, if you understand the, the, the Kabbalah tree, you understand, and the real orientation of that tree, you recognize what that crown of life on the tree of life actually is. Verse 11, it says, he that hath an ear, right, a spiritual ear. Because some are hearing this, hearing this, you know, hearing this with their physical ear, that's good. But are you hearing this, they're hearing it with their five, their five foolish senses. You know what I'm saying? But what about the, the truly wise spiritual sense, your spiritual ear it's speaking of? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that overcometh. You see, that's the goal for I and I. Not to be get even with the white man. I don't want to get even with the white man. That means I'll be a devil too. I don't be even with the white man. I don't be even. I won't get, I'm get even with him. You see, people talking stupid. You understand? It says, he that overcometh. You want to be an overcomer. You want to overcome these things. Not just get even. See, when you want to get even, you still got a monophic, monophic in your heart. You understand? So therefore, we call you monophicon. That's your name, monophicon. Right? He that overcometh, but Christ, Yeshua, reception, faith in him, and relationship with Yeshua in spirit and in truth, it drives out that monophic. You understand? Day by day, step by step, walk his way. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. You have to get this right here, the second death. You understand? There's such a thing known as the second death upon which we will go into, we will elaborate a little bit more. Now, so it's saying that there are some uh, Jews who call themselves Jews who are not. And a lot of my so-called black Hebrews, Israelite, um, even some of the Rastafarian others, they always miss this part right here. That initially, you understand, initially it was speaking to us of the seed, you understand, of the seed, of this flesh. You know when Paul was talking about, and they are my countrymen of the flesh? That was so clear to them because they saw Paul as a black man of the flesh, of my skin type. You understand, I'm a Jew, not a Gentile. I'm black, not white, is what he was saying. But now you have to understand what happened. There were some who were faithful, Hebrews or Jews, Judeans, in other words, right? And there were others who were not faithful, even though they were our color, they were not our kind. See, so we have the, the same dynamic, excuse me, the same dynamic working out today. But then John says something very important right there in the scripture. He says that he will raise up a people who are no people, who are not even a people, to provoke us. You right to, to to really wake us up. This is why you always have black folks saying, comparing on some level to the Jews. Oh, we should be like the Jews. Oh, such and such like the Jews. And even the Jews in their ways always kind of linking to be a little black. You know, and we see it a lot going back to the jazz days, hip hop. You know, the Beastie Boys. You know, I mean, it comes all down right today. They always kind of try to identify. Even that little clip on two broke girls with the uh, um two so-called um, Jewish boys trying to act like gangster, yo, how much for that, blah, 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 so forth and so on, and we know where it comes from. 
But why do they have to keep going back to that? See, there's a half of the story that, that they're so confused. The devil got them so much. That's what it's saying right here. The devil got them so much that they're denying their black origin. I mean, look how the Jews have been treated. I'm talking about the European Jews now by their own so-called white people. You know, you and I know, I and I know that it's deeper than some of the superficial stuff. Because we will say they're both white folks. What's going on? They're both white folks. You know, compared to our, if you're just being selfish, looking at our own experience, we say they're both the same, but there's something deeper. You understand? There's something deeper than that. You see, and Charles Darwin, he was trying to get to the bottom of it, the origin of species or the preservation of the what? Favored races in the struggle for life. That's the secondary name of origin of species. We want to deal with that evolution, that false god, that false religion known as evolution. Watch it now. Watch it. But then you're going to see how that also connects with some of these other um, prongs of the Satanistic attack, you know what I'm saying, against the righteous remnant. So we we'll go to... Uh, Revelation 3 and 9, just to sum up right here, right? Um, but let's begin from verse 7. Now, we've gone from 316 A.D., Revelation 2 and 9, an earlier time. And remember, 316 A.D. is roughly the 4th century. Remember, everybody says that Ethiopia became Christian in the 4th century. This is what even a lot of Habhashas be saying, Abbasaz. Not Abisha, Abisa. You know the difference? Look it up. You understand? Be saying. But really, the Bible tells us that it was from um, Philip baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch. You understand? So that was basically three, almost 300 years before 316. But Ethiopia did become, the, the Christianity became the official religion under, under the, the first truly Christian king, Emperor Izana of Ethiopia. All right, now we're going to scroll forward to chapter 3, and we're now speaking of the message to Philadelphia, the true church in the professing church. What does that mean? That means that there's a true church, right? Even in the, the, the outer church, there's a true church there. You understand? There's a true church even in the outer church. Like a lot of you all might go to all different kind of churches, but you're still checking out these messages. Why? Because this is the true church within that professing so-called church. Because, yes, Rastafari is the true Christ man. So, therefore, Rastafari is a true Christian. See, some, some, some of you all may not get it because you're, you're not submitting yourselves to the will of God. You're not, you're not, you're not following and learning the teaching of his majesty. Any Rasta that tells you otherwise is contradicting the teaching of the one whom they call God and Father, the King of Kings, Ketamawi, Haile Shalase or Haile Selassie first. Now, we're here in the verse 7 of chapter 3. It says, And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is Kedus, he that is Kedus, he that is holy, he that is set apart, set apart, holy, you know what I'm saying? He that is true. He that hath the key of David, of great King David. Remember, Solomon and Sheba, the kingdom of David was renewed in the highlands of Ethiopia. Thus, Moa and Bessas, the Imanageta Yehuda. Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. All right? He that is true. He that hath the key of David. He that openeth, and no man shutteth. And shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. An open door. And no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. And as a Rastafari, at this time we're not very really strong, strong people. You understand? We're almost the least of every people. We have a little strength, right? And has kept my word. We're to keep the King of Kings' word and the testimonies of our Black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshia, faithful to the end and through the end to the new day. And has kept my word and has not denied my name. You understand? We don't deny the King of Kings, the Father's name, or the Son's name, Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshia. 
Behold, look and see. Now, this, see, I, I had to go back, first of all, to the first couple of verses. Because a lot of folks don't go there when they go through some kind of Bible kind of stuff. They kind of give you the, the I, we call it, um, what's well, a sound bite, you know, kind of a sound bite clip. But we like to give you the context. You see, because if you don't get the context, it's easy for them to throw in nonsense. And that's why so many people, you've been in church all their life, been reading the Bible, still, still they're not, there's not the results. The results aren't really there in your head and your heart. This is why we're trying to focus more on these sort of issues, these real sort of issues in our walk that affect us. You know, it's not just so who is a Jew, that, that some of that kind of other information that's basically a lot of um, kind of historical information. That's, that's good. That's important. But it's also to get to the real-time overcoming information, the information you know, that puts us in formation to overcome, to receive the barakat, the blessing. You understand? Know and to preserve our birthright and to live within the covenant, the al kidan the Benai Barit. Verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, which, which claim, say, they're Jews, and are not. So, it, it is not I and I that sayeth this. You understand? Know it is them that say that they are this. But then we look at what they're doing, you understand? Like we said, there's the secular Jews who just use the, being a Jew. If you, if you say you don't like something about what they're doing, they will make it an anti-Semitic. Oh, you're saying that because I'm a Jew. You know, they are not. But do lie. John says they're lying. But now they say, if you say that, we're going to do this to you. We're going to such and such. So you fear man more than you fear Jah. Woe is you in this world and the world to come. Yovas, behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. So he's saying if we keep our house in his proper order, we don't even have to worry about those other matters. You understand? He's going to make them come and bow down and worship before thy feet. You understand? Before our as brass, bronze that's burnt in the fire feet. You understand? And to know. And to know, not to believe, not to just have faith in, not to guesstimate, but to know, you understand, that I have loved thee. Because, why, why, does, why does John love I and I? Even though I and I people, black people have been through so why does he love I and I as Ethiopian Hebrew, even though we have turned our back and we've been through so much? Why? Because thou has kept the word of my patience, the word of my patience. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. They keep saying, yo, 2012, man, yo, 2012, yo, December, man, where are you going to be at, yo, uh, Ross, where are you going to be? Let's, no, it's not really 2012. You better be preparing for 2013. <laughs> A lot of y'all, yo, yo. You see, you still believe, you have faith. They, they keep talking about 2012. You don't believe it because they keep talking about it. Notice, every time they talk about it, they sell you a product. Think about it. Every time they talk about it, they're bringing out some product. Or, or they're selling you something. They're selling you an idea. You understand? Or they're trying to grab your soul, trying to steal your soul. Your, your, your mind, your feeling, your emotions, and your will, your thoughts. Get your thoughts all wrapped up. You understand? But John says he's going to keep us from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast, hold firmly, hold tightly, which thou, that, hold, fat, hold that fast which thou hast. And with hold tight what you got, you know what I'm saying, in, in truth, that no man may take thy crown. Again, that word is very similar to the verse in, in 2 and 9, these two uh, Jews who say they are Jews sort of verses, right, in Revelation have been so woefully misunderstood. You understand? Misunderstood and condemning one just because they say they're Jew. But it goes deeper than that. You understand? John has higher standards than that. You understand? Verse 12, he that overcometh, right? Remember, once again we have this idea. We have this we have this idea, once again, once again, we have this idea of, of, of an overcomer, right? He says, he, him that overcometh will I make a pillar, a pillar, 
a pillar. Maybe we could segue here to the obelisk or the circumcised obelisk vid, right? Um, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Now, remember, this is the red letter. You know when they say the red letter Bible? They say the red letter Bible is Jesus speaking, right? The red letter Bible is Yeshua. It's Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior is speaking, right? Um, see, it's important for us to recognize his, his, his humanity. See, because recognize that humanity, it takes away the hundreds of years of Willie Lynchism. See, some people say, "Why well, he could say it's black," and you and you, sometimes you look upon them. Either their 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 um, cloven-footed Negroes who don't chew the club, don't don't chew the cud. You understand? They really don't they really don't chew on it too much. So they, in a sense, they're like unclean, though they have some of the signs of being our own people because, like, the animals that have a certain kind of, like, the pig is split foot, you understand? But it still, it doesn't chew the cud, so it's unclean for us. Now, I want to say, don't you call nobody unclean. Don't you call no people unclean. No, in Christ, none of them is, is unclean. In other words, if they truly are in Christ, but they claim to be in Christ, but can't recognize, you understand, can't recognize his majesty, can't recognize Ethiopia, can't recognize blackness, that is righteousness. They got to go and find some fault. They got to they gotta peep and mutter, you understand, against the king of kings. Warning, you understand, warning. It says here, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. So Christ is saying, I got a God. I got a God. I got a father. Receive me, have faith in me. My God and my Father becomes your God and your Father, and it becomes our Father. Now let's understand that. This is why when we speak about the Triune God, a lot of folks they misunderstand, understand that. All the all the Aryans out there, you understand the Aryans. We're not talking about the neo-Nazi Aryans. We're talking about the the, the religious Aryan and Nestorians out there, the schismatics out there. They try to call us as Tawahedo Ethiopian schismatic. Who has caused more schisms in the world than Mystery Babylon? You understand? And Popery. I mean, look at the evidence. They say, oh, yeah, well, that's one we didn't know. We're so sorry about that. We're sorry about slavery. We're sorry about that. So forth, so forth. Let's all come together. And these people are mad. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like that old thing with the snake trying to cross the road and gets on back of the toitus and toitus says, oh, no, 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 no. You, you, you're a snake, you're going to do this and that to me. And, and, and the snake is saying, oh, no, I won't do that. I need to get this next, next side. I need to see my peoples and everything. And you can go across that. Well, I promise I won't do that. Halfway across the water, what happens? The same thing is going to happen to all of these who are getting back in bed with Jezebel. You understand? And getting in bed with Balaam. You understand? We still be coming out of Babylon. Some of them are getting in bed with them again. Whoa, yo. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. You know, the Spirit just told me that some folks will say, but, yo, suppose they truly repent. It wasn't them. It was the ancestors. Or it was other popes. Or it was other Catholics. It wasn't them. What, what, what did John the Baptist say? Where are the fruits worthy for repentance? I mean, if you truly are repenting, then bring forth the fruits. You say, well, what are the fruits? Read your Bible. You understand? Read your Bible. You understand? Or ask your pastor, your priest, or somebody like that. And if they can't answer you and teach you out of the Word, then, then why are you wasting your time? Tradition? Tradition? You make the Word of God vain through your traditions, what my master, Yeshua HaMoshiach, says. But he says that he will write upon us a name of my God and the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. Everybody keeps going over to Old Jerusalem. You know what I mean? And we tell them, well, well the African Eon is Ethiopia. They're like, no, that's not. It, no, it's over there in, in such and such where, where the people who you believe are. We just talked about the circumcision thing. I mean, if they don't have little matters, small matters like circumcision now, right, then what about bigger matters? And we're not saying all Jews. We're saying those Jews who say they are, you understand? Because Yehuda means the praises of Jah. You understand? And 
Christ says that in vain do they worship Jah, you know, and teaching the commandments of men and not the word of God. So distinguish who's who based on that standard, that criterion. So this new Jerusalem cometh down out of heaven. It comes down out of heaven from my God. What do we say about Lalibella? Lalibella, right? Lalibella. Lalibella, Lalibella. Um, the, the Ethiopians testify that it was angels that built that in a day or a night, rather. People say, oh, that couldn't happen in a night. Oh, if you saw it in the movie, right? If they showed you in a movie, like a Harry Potter movie, you believe it then, right? Okay. All righty. You know what I mean? London Bridge is coming down. My fear lady who was taken hostage. That's another point right there. Which cometh down out of heaven from my God, from my Jah, from my God, or Elohe, 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 Haile, Haila, 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 Lama Sabak Atani. And I will write upon him my new name. So Yeshua is saying, Yeshua is saying that he would have a new name. That's important. That's very, very important right there. And this is what we as Rastafari say that Rastafari is that manifestation of that new name. And for us of, of of faith and of truth and of conformity to the will of his majesty, we still embrace, of course, Yeshua, Jesus Christos, now that we know the truth. But we recognize that name, Tafari, he is the son of man, Rastafari. That is that new name for I and I, because that he will call us by a new name. Why? Because the old name is so confused. If we say Israel, what, what do you think about? Do you think about black people? When we say Jew, what do you think about? Do you think about black people, Afro-Shemites? Do you even know what an Afro-Shemite is? You hear about Semite, 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 you think it's about white folks. Hebrew is Afro-Shemitic. That means that Hebrew is African. Do you know that? Do you care about that? Well, if you don't care about that, go elsewhere. You understand? But anyway, you're free. <laughs> As my nana said, you're free unto your fool, right? You know what I'm saying? But, but Jah gives us I and I freeness in Yeshua HaMoshiach. Verse 13 to end this particular portion. He that hath an ear, once again, let him make him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Stay tuned, brothers and sisters. Shalom Rastafari.